Hey guys, what's up? It is Friday night. It is 8.30. It is CTV, Channel 27, Comcast in the local Santa Cruz area. Or if you're watching us on the stream on communitytv.org, this is Dave the Drummer, the host of the Talking Drum TV. Welcome, welcome to TV land. As I mentioned, uh, I am the host of the Talking Drum. And tonight we're going to have two brand new drummers that I'd like to introduce you to. Local Santa Cruz players. We have Logan Tyler from Light the Band, and we have Kiyoki Thompson from the Red Light District. Both are fantastic shows. I would, you know, recommend go check them out if you get the chance to. So let's get right over to those interviews. Starting off with Logan Tyler. Logan, take it away. This is my guest here tonight, Logan Tyler. What the, up, everybody? The drummer of Light the Band. Very first episode of Talking Drum for 2017. Uh, Tell us a little bit about your relationship with the band. Yeah, man. Uh, I play in a band right now called Light the Band. Um, we're based here out of Santa Cruz. We've been playing here for about three years now. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's rolling good. We have a couple gigs we play here in town. We play every other Friday at Bocce's. Right. And uh, we play uh, in San Francisco every other Tuesday at the Boom Boom Room. Right. Congratulations on that. Yeah, man. Thank you. It's been really cool. We've been playing there for a couple months now. Uh, we have a little residency going there with them now. So yeah, we're, we're very excited about that. Right on, right on. Um, so how long have you been playing with Light the Band? Uh, with Light the Band since the end of 2013. Okay. Um, so our first gig was uh, November 5th of 2013. Right on. So just over three years. A little bit about your drumming background. How long have you been playing? You start out like with the you know school band or something like that? Uh, yeah, actually I got really into music when I was in seventh grade. Um, and I joined school band at my middle school and did like the percussion department for two years there, whatever you want to call it, playing different percussion instruments. Um, but I kind of got real... I like disheartened with it because I always wanted to play drum set in the concert band, but there was a, a kid who was my grade who was really good at drums, so mm -hmm. he always got to play the drum set. Mm -hmm. So I, once I got into high school, I kind of stopped. I just kind of, I was just like, I didn't like playing timpani toms and like cowbells and stuff. I right. like play drum set. Uh, but then I kind of put it away and didn't do any actual like academic music of any kind until um, I was a senior in high school. I just got really big into, I was really big in like reggae and rock and roll, a couple things. So. Uh, I just kind of got the spark to play again and uh, bought a drum set from a classmate who was selling a full kit. And uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history. So right yeah, on. About 10 years now, I guess, I've been playing. Right on, right on, right yeah. on. So uh, I often ask this of uh, uh, the guests. So um, do you have any uh, inspiration, like uh, uh, drummers? It doesn't necessarily need to be just drummers. It could be, you know, like musicians in general. Um, I'd say for me, uh, Stevie Wonder, even though he does play drums, the guy is just, you know, he blows my mind with, you know, yeah. his entire you know, catalog of stuff he does. But is there anybody that just like, man, you just, you hear them, you see them, and they're just like, they get that spark, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'd say lately what my biggest inspiration has been in the last maybe year, two years, has been, I'd say, The Grateful Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as far as like a musical group or entity that I really look up to and, and try to emulate and try to... Maybe not emulate so much like the style of music they were playing, like every like the notes or whatever, but just kind of what they did as a band and the touring and the playing <coughs> and the recording and the this just the uh, mind state that they were in, I guess, just the uh, what they were going for vibe wise with their shows right. and creating experiences at their shows and you know, that's kind of what I want to. Uh, it's, it's been the biggest influence on my playing, I think. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, this town loves the dead, and I mean, this town has roots in the dead. The Santa Cruz Mountains has. You know, yeah. is the is the birthplace of uh, Mr. Jerry himself. So uh, I mean, you know, that's awesome. Uh, I think a band really that can get that kind of feel, yeah. especially in this area. Yeah. You guys, you know, I mean, I've been to you guys' shows. You've got the crowds eating out of your hand. You guys do what you guys do, Thank and you man. do it well. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about your drum setup. Like when you go to a gig, you play a show. I mean, we have uh, you yeah. know, we have one of your kids here. So yeah, uh, sitting behind my kid here. Uh, I play a pretty normal four-piece, you could call it, snare drum, high tom, floor tom, kick, um, just a couple cymbals is pretty much my basic kit. Um, I have another kit that I gig with now, which is uh, an old Ludwig kit, a 1965 Ludwig kit that I really like that I just got. Um, so this has kind of become my practice kit, this kind of sits up in the room now. Um, but this is pretty much it, nothing too special, nothing too crazy. Um, this is my favorite snare drum in the world. This is my uh, Krabi Auto snare. Uh, I actually want to give a shout out to Johnny Krabi Auto, rest in peace. 
Um, he passed away a couple months ago. He's one of the greatest drum makers of all time. That's no argument um, that. And yeah, they're actually going out of business, which is crazy. So this thing is like becoming will become a real real deal collector's item. So yeah. So we have a clip of Tyler in action with Light the Band. We're gonna jump to that clip and then we're gonna come back talk a little bit more with Mr. Tyler. And uh, we'll be back in a few with that. In the meantime, enjoy this clip. Awesome stuff. Absolutely. So, uh, tell me what is, I mean, you, you told me you guys are playing the Boom Boom Boom. Yeah. You guys, you know, you got your uh, Bocce Cellar gig. And then yeah, yeah. Yeah. they got this CD the that CD they just, out. tell them about the CD. Yeah, man. Ourselves recorded here in our studio here in Santa Cruz. Um, really proud. I produced it, mixed it, um, and we did everything. It's all original music, too. So, um, that's something we've been working really hard on. We've been writing music together since we started playing together in three years ago, so I feel like this is really the culmination of all that time that we've been playing together. Um, and the band's kind of changed over the years. We've added a few members, so um, this kind of reflects all that, too. Definitely uh, the point. I want to uh, want to make a nice listening experience for people, you know. Right. I'm really into the concept of albums and full musical statements or whatever you want to call it, you know, listening right. to a full record. So right. it's my intention to, uh, if people were to sit back and kind of listen to it front to back, that's kind of my dreams come true. If people will give it a full, you know, give it the full listen to and kind of try to take it in as a, as like an artistic statement, you know. Right, it's definitely right. a snapshot of what we've been doing for a while. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, uh, tell me something. Uh, 
You had told me before about uh, the person who actually came up with the logo, and I think it's a really interesting story. And I, I was wondering if you could share it with yeah, me. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. She's, uh, she's a local artist. She's really great. Uh, her name is Selena Zantos, um, and her art name is Scavenge. Uh, with a K, like SK. Mm. Um, Scabbage, she's a really cool lady. Um, I met her through some local friends of mine. Um, a couple of my friends run uh, Lemon Tree and um, the Most Funky Click. Shout out to Lemon Tree. Yeah, shout out to Lemon Tree and the boys. Um, but just being from around here, I have a couple, you know, a lot of friends that do artwork and right. different uh, graphic design. Um, so when Light the Band started, uh, when we started doing our thing, getting our name together and getting our stuff together, we. Um, um, Started looking for someone to do art, and uh, she was a friend of mine who I knew, so we contracted her to do some different logos for us. Yeah. And uh, she, uh, there's kind of a big story behind the, the story of Light the Band, and it kind of has to do with um, kind of some family members passing away and kind of uh, using, you know, the passing of some loved ones to kind of, as an excuse to create and kind of, I guess, be more artistic. That's kind of always been the the fuel of our band that's where I started it absolutely so, um, absolutely I uh, yeah. I asked uh, I asked you to ch to share the story with me yeah. because I I can totally relate um, I started picking up drums more seriously after I lost my dad but it's the ability to turn tragedy yeah, into things of strength and power and yeah. uh, you know it ultimately is glory because yeah, it's it's a, a thing that makes you feel empowered you know this is something special that you can do yeah. and your friend you know same thing anybody that can kind of turn that loss into yeah. a positive i mean yeah. big ups on them yeah i think the best way to honor people that pass away is to uh, create for them whatever it may be you know yeah, absolutely right. so yeah. how can the fans get a hold of the cd or at least get it i'm sure you guys are uh, sa uh, what they soundcloud Bandcamp, yeah. uh, itunes draft city spotify all right. the major outlets a bunch of merch too i got merch for sale okay for sale. So if you want a physical copy i'd say either come to a show or uh you want to just tell them the website tell them the website yeah absolutely light the band um you can check us out check out all our shows check out our new merch we have a bunch of videos up a bunch of pictures up tons of music up um, I also record tons of live shows that we play. The guy, he knows what he's doing. He's putting out his heart and soul when he goes and he does this with his band. So go and check him out. Go and take a listen to well, him. What are some things you like to do like outside of playing and music? If I'm not playing drums, I'm either dorking out in front of a stereo, in front of a speaker, yeah. or... You know, just listening to music, yeah, yeah, or playing ball. Right yeah, on. Yeah. Want to give a yeah. shout out to my girlfriend, being super supportive, helping me out through all the dark times, walking me through all the, uh, you know, times you uh, kind of lose your confidence. It's always good to have somebody there to kind of have your back and make you kind of feel like, you know, you're a little bit higher in the club, you know, above the clouds than you think you really are. And uh, I want to leave you with that. Much love. We'll see you next time, guys. Peace. Peace out. And we're back. Thank you so much for coming on and interviewing. Next up, we have the drummer from Red Light District, Kyoki Thompson. Kyoki Thompson, quick as can be, with tons and tons of skills. Let's get over to that interview right now. Kyoki, take it away. Got Kyoki Thompson here with Red Light District. Uh, known Kyoki for a couple of months now. We've actually kind of crossed paths in strange ways. He actually started uh, playing with the band I play with called Wall Bitch, where it would become Stalked by Satellites. Yoki, hey, uh, how long have you been playing with Red Light District? Uh, it's a little over a year now. Right. Yeah. Um, it was May of 2015, I uh -huh. think, that we started this incarnation of what we are today. Right. Um, you know, me and the guitarist, Ruby, Ruby Lamb. Uh, joined after uh, they had kind of a, a switch in lineup. They needed a new guitarist and drummer. Just so happened to be living with Dan, the keyboardist, and he asked me to try out, and I did, and it worked out. Originally, right. I was only supposed to be a fill-in drummer, um, and we actually had pretty good chemistry, so they stuck with it. Right on, right on. Uh, how long have you been playing yourself? Um, about 14 years, I was 10 years old when I started. What kind of uh, background do you have? Uh, did you play in high school, marching band, jazz ensemble? Like, what's kind of your background? Uh, started in middle school, like sixth grade, um, just concert band, and then went into high school, played drums all those three years, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. High school, I started playing marching band, like snare drum. Um, eventually became the snare captain there, and then moved here when I was 17 started playing drum set 
uh, at that point because the marching band in Scotts Valley was non-existent. Yeah. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so who are uh, who some who some just musicians in general uh, inspire you? Uh, Steve Gadd definitely is a big one. Um, of course, we were just talking about Buddy Rich and the Sticks. Watched a lot of Buddy Rich growing up. Um, I, I love uh, I love like Bernard Purdy. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Like, Purdy. You can hear it in our music sometimes. Yeah, I definitely love what he does. Um, of course, John Bonham. Yeah, the, the list goes on. I yeah. can go on, on forever. Yeah. yeah, I love uh, I love I love Purdy because he's. He's the shuffle man. I mean, if you yeah. if you know the guy, you know he's Mr. Shuffle. I mean, seriously, uh, when you got somebody as good as like uh, Jeff Picaro, basically kind of like stealing your juice a little bit, you know that you've got some strokes. So uh, uh, tell me a little more about uh, your drum configuration. Uh, it's a Ludwig Classic Maple. I have a 22-inch bass drum. Um, it's brand new. I just bought it like a year ago. Basically, when I joined the band, I was playing a, like an 18-inch jazz kit. And uh, it wasn't cutting it for rock and roll, so decided to upgrade. 13-inch um, tom, 16-inch floor tom. I have Zildjian K Constantinopoles on my ride cymbal and my hi hat, and then a 21-inch. Well, the ride is 22-inch, and then I have a 21-inch uh, sweet ride for my one crash. Okay. Oh, and then a china. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You rock the china. I uh, I love my china. Uh, I was. Very tempted to go and get a china off of uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Naka, who I've mentioned, I've mentioned before. And I probably should have grabbed that, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with my china, which is why I didn't jump on it. Uh, is there a particular stick uh, style that, or a style of stick? I like I should... uh, Bill Bruford um, you know, from Yes. Mm -hmm. I like his sticks. Um, you know, just like 5As, really, or what I normally use. Um, nothing too thick. I like a lighter stick with a... Kind of the, I like a um, wood tip too. Yeah. Like nylon. That's exactly what I was just about to ask is wood tip or nylon. And, you know, for some people it makes a difference. For some people they just kind of prefer more of the size and they just kind of deal with that. Uh, we got a clip of Red Light District featuring Kyoki playing. Hey guys, Dave the Drummer here. Be sure to subscribe to the Dave the Drummer YouTube channel. You'll be able to get all the newest Talking Drum episodes as soon as they get uploaded. Be sure to also check me out on Facebook on facebook.com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831. Be also sure to check me out all my music just to kind of get a listen to what I've done, what kind of stuff I do. Soundcloud.com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831559. I'm also on Bandcamp. You can look me up as Dave El Batarista. You will find my album Amigos. It is a three check EP, uh, jazz, rock, fusion, different kinds of stuff. Uh, it's a 10 minute long album, but it's all original. Originals. Very, very happy to have put that out last year in October. But hey, I haven't really gotten, I haven't tried my best to kind of get it out there, mass exposure. But you know, I have plenty of time to do that. It's my album, and so I'll do whatever the hell I want with it. So, anyways, be sure to also check me out on Instagram at Dave the Drummer831. You can always see what I'm up to at my website, pudesuhero.wixsite.com forward slash Dave the Drummer831. And We'll see you guys at the very next episode of The Talking Drum.
tell me what you guys have got going on in the next couple of months. Uh, we got a we're releasing an EP uh, that'll be December seventeenth. Uh, playing an EP release party at Mo's Alley. It's a Saturday night. Um, it's gonna be pretty four bands, I think, including us mm -hmm. and three other bands. Um, it's gonna be quite the party. Um, well, we're gonna have fun. I'm definitely gonna be there to support Red Light District, to support Kyoki. Uh, I've definitely been a, a big fan of their music for a couple of, as long as you know. Uh, I honestly can't remember the first. I, I'd seen them played before you got in there. Oh, and yeah, I, me too. That's yeah. what made me get in. I yeah. Mean, and you know, so... Uh, Jaime, Jaime Sanchez was who I saw play before. He right. Really loved what he did with the drums, and a lot of what I play now is comes from what he played. Right. You know. And so, uh, you know, I it's another band that uh, I was really very happy to have the drummer uh, come on and talk with me and it's even better when it's somebody that I've you know kind of been acquainted with for a little while now um lastly is there like uh passions that you're sort of like your like hobbies things you're really into like for me people know that I'm like a huge DDR fanatic I literally just played showered and just came right over to film this thing and uh I literally will play it any waking second I can get a chance to so I can tell like, you like it's mainly working and job and to support myself to do that. Um, I like to, you know, go on bike rides, whatever, whatever anybody else does in their free time. You know? Right. But drumming really is, you know, try to make that a priority as much as I can. Oh, no, no, I, I totally respect that. Uh, I think that it's good that you got to have some things to unwind. Bike riding being one of those things. I mean, oh, you, yeah. get, you get so lost, you know, doing those things, but in like a good way, you know, uh, especially uh, riding up, like uh, upper campus at UCSC. I mean, I've had many times where I've just been so stressed out and writing up there, you're just mentally, you're just, you're lost and you love it. Thank you so much for coming on and interviewing Kiyoki. Hey, that's another episode of the Talking Drum TV. I want to thank both of my guests for coming on and interviewing and taking some time out of their busy schedules to come and talk to us. Next week, we're going to have two brand new drummers coming on and interviewing. We can't wait to show you what we've got next. It's fantastic. It's all about Santa Cruz. It's all about Santa Cruz locals. This is a show in and around Santa Cruz, but I'd like to think that we're giving the world a window into the music scene that we have here locally. So until next time, be sure to check out all my links to social media, facebook.com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831. Be sure to check out uh, the SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831559. Check me out on Bandcamp at Dave El Batarista. Dot bandcamp .com. Go ahead and check me out on my website. It's Puresuhiro, P U R O R E S U Hero, dot Wix site, W I X S I T dot com forward slash Dave the Drummer 831. You can also check me out on Instagram. My Instagram name is Dave the Drummer 831. We will see you next week. I'm sorry, we will see you next month with a brand new episode of The Talking Drum. Until then, Blue Justice!